Windaria is a sci-fi fantasy adventure film released in 1986. It centers around Izu and his girlfriend Marin, a couple just living out a peaceful life in the village of Saki. They make a living by selling fruit and veg in the city of Ether. However, all is not well in the land as Ether becomes involved in a war with a rival nation called Paro. Fed up with nobody taking him seriously, Izu decides to join the war and leave Marion behind for fame and fortune, telling her that he will return someday. This is the sad tale of a man that had it all but threw it all away. Thus we spend most of the film following Izu's journey, which is quite a tragic one. While Izu is the main character, we still have other interesting characters, namely Ananus, the princess of Ether, who is madly in love with Jill, the prince of Paro. They have been meeting in secret and both want peace for their nations. However, the weight of their elders and the people's desire for war weighs heavy on their shoulders. It's a classic case of Romeo and Juliet. It's interesting how Ether and Paris are depicted. Ether is shown as his paradise, amazing landscapes, a buzzing market, a friendly atmosphere from everyone around enjoying the great weather. Paris, on the other hand, is a dark, war-torn military city a sleazy environment where people just look out for themselves, something our main guy Izu will find out soon enough. You can also see the differences between the countries by what weapons and military force they have. Ether is certainly less advanced using bow and arrows and air balloons for transport, whereas Paris has far more advanced tech in tanks and guns, both sides still suffer heavy losses. Windaria starts off with a beautiful sequence where many people have gathered in Saki village to mourn someone's passing. Their spirit seems to fly up into some floating ship that takes their spirit away. This is obviously some kind of tradition. Another place that keeps popping up in here is the Forest of Doubt. This land is what separates the two warring kingdoms, but at various points people pass through here. It seems to be a haunted forest that preys on your fears and weaknesses, making you see things that are not there or become real once you succumb to those fears. Windaria is dripping in lore, if I was a YouTube lore channel I could probably milk 20 plus lore videos out of Windaria's runtime. Forest of Doubt lore, the village of Saki lore, Ghost Ship lore, the history of Paros lore, you get the idea. But you know, sometimes mysteries are best left unsolved. Windaria never enforces its law on you. It's all done in a passive way. It feels more like you're on a road trip through Windaria, sightseeing all the good and bad it has to offer. It's more focused on the characters, while the law stays in the background, and this is what really makes it work. I really liked Izu. He had his faults, for sure, but as a character, he was an interesting person. You can somewhat understand his desires and what drives him on. Even when he makes mistakes, you want to root for the guy. The music supplements the movie and is about as perfect as it could be. The art style and animation in here is fantastic. The character designs and the whole world look amazing. It really reminds me of some classic Sega JRPGs. If you're a fan of such things like Shining Force, Skies of Arcadia or Fantasy Star, then I think you're going to love this anime. This is the kind of anime you watch on a nice sunny day afternoon and it somehow makes your day even better. I mean, it's a tragic story, but the journey it takes you on is what a good fantasy movie should do. That makes it well worth a watch. If you're in the mood for some good fantasy adventure, you can't go wrong with this one. As always, thanks for watching and catch you next time.